All right, this is Moon Raider. Let's go. I'm going to go ahead and load an early game, just in the first uh, or secondary, I guess. So this is basically a 2D action platformer game. You play as this character here. I will get into the backstory in a little bit, but not quite yet. So you got a double jump. You also have a, a variable height jump, I believe. Well, it seems that way. So. There's a lot of weird quirks with this game. So you got uh, your buster rifle, I guess. Uh, as you keep firing it, if you hold down the button, it goes faster, and I think it maybe it gets stronger. But uh, so here's here's the deal here. So yeah, here you got uh, sometimes, as you can see, I've got like a, a short hop. There's a short hop. There's a short hop, and there's a tall jump. Now I'm not. I'm not doing anything differently that I can tell. I'm just pushing the jump button while I'm shooting. Sometimes I jump high, sometimes I jump low. And then if I don't shoot, if I just tap the button, it feels like I'm always jumping high. So that's just weird that sometimes when you're shooting, often when you're shooting, you don't jump your full jump. But there's only seems to be one jump height. And then of course you got your double jump. Now, um, what's interesting about this game, the most interesting thing is your uh, extra ability. You see, you got sort of got weapon energy. If I'm going to relate this to Mega Man, you've got your weapon energy up there in the top left, your 74%. Uh, with that, you can do this. You can fly around, basically, and that's going to consume weapon energy. And when you do fly around, you're also invincible and can damage enemies. Now, you can use this uh, weapon energy to usually um, re reach higher to higher, hard to get to spots. This is a bonus room that just has uh, extra gems in it. In fact, uh, you have to use gems to get up here to get these extra gems. Now, in addition to that ability, what else happens is that um, when you defeat enemies with uh, your dash, let's call it, you get health back. When you defeat them with your buster rifle, When you defeat enemies with your buster rifle, they get they turn to gems or weapon energy. So yeah, um, when you do a single jump or don't jump at all and use your dash, you can go in the four directions like that. If you double jump and then dash, you're kind of like a ball, and they're a little more wild to control. But that is what it is. Another weird thing about this game is that you cannot. Uh, shoot when you double jump. If you notice, when you double jump, you turn to a ball. You cannot shoot when you're like that. So if I'm holding down the shoot button and I jump a second time, it's going to make me stop shooting. And again, my jump height seems to be variable only when I'm shooting, and it's not clear why. There's all these things around here to give you more gems, which are used for your dash. You cannot jump through platforms. You cannot jump down through platforms, but you can jump up through platforms. Like I can't press down and jump to go through. However, you can press, if you just look up and down, you can see what's around you. You can shoot up when you're standing on the ground, but you cannot shoot up when you're jumping. Like this is me trying to shoot up when jumping. As you can see, the screen goes up, but uh, my bullets do not. You can also not shoot down. When you're sh when you're in the air, you can only shoot left and right, basically. So those are uh, aliens. So what the story is, the story... The story is kind of dumb. And I don't mean like it's very basic or simple or just ridiculous. I just mean it's, it's dumb. Um, I'll play the clip of the intro here. Let's go ahead and check it out, actually. So the intro only plays when you load up the game. I mean, maybe if you sit on the tile screen for a while, it'll play. So your father is an explorer, a guy from Earth, actually, 
and he's supposedly the first man on the moon in this dimension, in this uh, timeline. There he discovered the Selenites, uh, a vicious warrior civilization beneath the surface of the moon. So these people are, these aliens live on the moon. My mother was the queen, but her kingdom turned against her. Not sure why, not explained. She escaped with my father back to Earth. Uh, now she is dying. So you are a child of an Earth father and a Moon mother. The Moon, your mother was the queen. The people turned on your mother unexplainably why. And now you come back to the Moon. You invade the Moon to get these gems to basically save your mother. Because... She I guess, I don't know, maybe she can't live on, on the moon? Maybe she can't live or maybe she can't live on Earth without these gems, so you have to come and get a whole bunch of gems. You're basically just invading the moon to get all these gems so that your mom can live on the Earth. And um, that's all the story there is. When you beat the game, there's no other extra story other than you got enough uh, gem power to save your mom. That's the end of the game. Um, what? It feels like there's something missing. Like maybe they turned on your mom because because she was she was getting along with this Earth Earthling who uh, was who showed up, uh, but that's never never talked about. There's no. Um, additional story development as you play through the game would have been nice to have you know some kind of drama or something something um so those switches as i pull them it kind of takes the screen over to where they are the game does not um freeze when you do that it just takes it just takes the screen over and does that so I can't, I do think the game is, um, for all the, it's got a lot of weird quirks, um, but I think it's at least fun to play. Um, the thing is, this um, dash ability, once you get to using it, um, basically you have to balance um, killing enemies with uh, your blaster for gems and killing them for health if you take damage. Now, taking damage is just as simple as that. There are plenty of things in the game that will kill you instantly, like lava and certain spikes. Not all spikes, but certain spikes. So if I jump on the lava, it'll kill me. It'll only send you back to the beginning of the screen on when you died. So, there's not really a huge loss, but everything that you did on that screen, of course, will be undone. So yeah, as I take damage, as you can see I'm missing one piece of health up there now. If I kill this enemy with my dash, I get health back. Also these containers will restore health. But uh, also this dash move, the reason I started this file at 2-1 is because you get the dash move at the end of the first area. And so I'm just starting the second area with the dash move already. And yes, the dash move does make you invincible. It will not kill every enemy with one hit, but most enemies. Oh. So, um, as far as extra things to do, for the most part, it's just a straight run through the game. You just run through it, beat it. Um, as far as uh, secrets and extra stuff to do, there are, as you can see at the top of my screen, there's a 16 that is related to uh, these gems, uh, like that red one up there. Now it'll be 17. So I'm not sure if there's any effect on the game, because when I beat the game, I just beat the game uh, earlier today. and. Um, when you beat the game, it, it just brings your total up to 200. I don't know if there's actually 200 in the game. 
I got up to 130 something on my own. And I don't think I missed 70 of them. That seems like a lot to miss. So I don't know if there's anything for collecting all of those. Maybe it's tied to like an achievement. I guess I haven't actually looked at the achievement list thoroughly. Uh, but there are those secret areas with just which just have nothing but gems inside. You get an achievement for finding each of those rooms. Uh, there's ten worlds. Each one has just like a different coat of paint, basically. Like this one's kind of uh, got a bunch of. This one's kind of like a lava area. There are secrets like this. This is a power-up. So there are certain walls. It says my suit now holds more gem energy. I'm not sure exactly how, because my max is still going to be 99%. Maybe my, maybe what that really means is my use of gem energy is reduced, so I can do my dash for longer. There's also these alien guys. They're in cages, and you can set them free. Um, I don't recall there being an achievement tied to getting all of them, but they do show up at the end of the game based on all the ones you found. Like I said, those switches don't take control away from you, they just move the camera away from you. There are a different kind of switch that looks like a light bulb that you break. That one maybe in the next area. That one does take control away from you. It stops everything and shows you what it's doing. Now that's weird. Oh, here's the boss. Now that's weird because I think maybe all the switches should be like that. But they aren't. Okay, here we go. We're going to have a problem. So, all the bosses, except one actually, will take your gem energy away from you so you can't use your dash to just, you know, because that would be way too easy. But all the bosses, um, except one, do take away your gem energy so that you have to kind of just go on what you have. Okay. Now, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. Obviously you can beat this guy, I already beat him. The, the first couple of bosses are like the hardest in the game because, I don't know, they have more unique difficulty to them. Like, this is all surrounded by instant death lava. None of the other bosses have this kind of setup. Um, in fact, I'd probably say it's the hardest boss in the game. Well, okay, maybe the final boss is tougher. But that's only because the final boss is longer. We can beat this guy. That platform did not come up very soon. Alright, one more try. Of course, I don't have any gem energy, so I can't extend my jump with a dash. Oh boy. Fire. Okay, we beat him. Great. So. Uh, one thing I would recommend is that anytime you are worried about losing progress, you can go back. In fact, you can go back to the very beginning of the game if you want, and then you don't have to worry about losing progress, because if you die now, you just get sent back to the beginning of the, the room where you enter. And now I have gem power, so I can do this. Grab some health. 
I probably should be better off without the second jump because I don't want to. All right, so here we go. Lasers, those will kill you instantly. Just kind of annoying. Oh, conveyor belts. So yeah, I'm. Oh, here's the light switch I was talking about. So if I hit this, I now will lose control of myself and it'll open the door for me. I'm thinking all the switches should be like that. Because it's just weird that those do and others don't. If you saw I was hopping on the corner here. Just some weird uh, hit detection there. It's kind of weird that you can't completely sit in the corner. So yeah, the game, it's got its weird oddities to it. For the most part, it's fun. It's, um, it's just a straight uh, run through the game kind of thing. Don't think it's a Metroidvania because it's... I mean, you can technically go all the way back to the beginning. You can revisit old areas. But you don't have to to beat the game. You don't get, like, extra power-ups. I mean, you don't get new abilities that you need to open up new doors or something like that. That was a glitch. I just touched that door and it thought I went through it. I didn't even try to do that. So yeah, uh, I got 27 of those big gems. It counts those, but I don't know of anything that will happen as you uh, collect them all. Whoops, that's a laser. So the reason I'm... I don't know if there's anything for getting everything is because I don't think I'm going to go for everything because as I found out when I beat the game today when you beat it like it usually saves as you're playing through the game it saves automatically where you are when you beat the game it just marks your file as complete and if you try to load it up it uh, puts you to the end game and the credits so I basically can't play my the file I beat with all my extra power-ups on it already. Like, I can't go searching through the rest of the game for uh, the other power-ups if I want to, like, get everything, maybe even get all the achievements that are on Steam. Um, I have to start a new file and uh, not beat the game to do that. And if I really wanted to get everything from each section of the world, it would be really nice to be able to, like, I don't know, hit left and right here to maybe select what zone I want to start at. That way I can like sort of quick jump to uh, previous zones if I think there's something there that I'm missing. That would be nice. Uh, other than that, it is just a straight run through the game and beat it kind of thing. Getting those hidden wall power-ups, it may not be necessary to beat the game, but it definitely helps a lot. Getting like uh, blaster upgrades, health upgrades. The one I got tonight was just a gem upgrade, which, I mean, I guess that helps, but the other ones are like, you have more health bars, you get uh, a stronger blaster, all that kind of stuff. Also, whenever you start up the game, it, it defaults on new game. I think that's kind of lame. It should default to load game, should you have any data. Also, there is a multiplayer mode, so you can play the whole game Actually, well, okay, once you get purse fast, bleh, once you get past the first screen of the game, actually, you can start playing multiplayer. So, it looks like you each get your own health bar. Um, I'm going to do this all by myself. Uh, if the second player wanders off and dies, looks like they can just respawn. Oh, it takes weapon energy for you to respawn, I think. Yeah, yeah, 10 weapon energy, it looks like. So you got similar powers. There is... Oh, you can uh, cancel out, even, if you want. So there is some weirdness with the uh, multiplayer. When I first started playing, uh, it basically didn't work at all. Um, but... It looks like it's been fixed to at least have you be able to move around. Um, but it also looks like there's some issues still with uh, getting warped back. 
Oh, so the second player does not have the, uh, the dash ability. Did I hit a light switch? So yeah, it definitely requires the first player to do some things. Can second player pull switches? They can. Okay. That's cool. Oh! Second player can uh, fly around by flapping wings because they don't have the dash which lets you fly, but this is pretty cool too. But yeah, uh, there is some occasional warping back to the first player. Not intentional. I don't know why it happens, but uh, it doesn't seem to be happening now. The options are also weird. So you got a full screen toggle. Um, you got a resolution selection here. Uh, of course, uh, I would complain that you can't really... Um, navigate the options menu with the controller. I mean, you play this game primarily with the controller. I'm pretty sure it's suggested to play this game with the controller, but you can't um, navigate the options menu with your controller. That's kind of lame. There should be an upgrade interface here for that. Also, do not adjust the volume. The volume should stay low because the game was recorded at a high volume level. So if you raise it up, the audio, the music's just gonna be clipping the entire game, the entire time you're playing. It's just gonna sound awful. So keep the volume low. It is recorded at a high volume, so even playing other Steam games, you're not going to notice a change in the volume on this game if you leave it at a low range. Uh, like even putting it up to a medium point, it's going to sound awful. So just keep it in a general low area. I think it's low by default, so just don't even touch it and you'll be fine. But that is Moon Raider. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for maybe better games like this. Um, uh, there are some pretty obvious ones out there, but... Uh, um, yeah, uh, this is a new game. I got it for free from the developer, and if they would like to make some changes based off of what I've said in this review, uh, I'd like to see them happen. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.